Amen. We're all capable of forgetting, especially me. It usually takes me two or three times hearing somebody's name, and then I still don't remember it always. Drink the water of life freely. This is part three. Revelation 22 and 17. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him drink of the water, drink the water of life freely. Amen. Amen. Drink the water of life freely. In this last section that I want to preach is if any man thirst, if any man thirst, now take it from John 7, 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried and saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yes. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees and they they said unto him, Why have you not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Never man spake like this man. You know, Jesus had preached for almost three years at this time. And he had healed the sick. He had raised the dead. The poor had the gospel preached to them. The leper was cleansed. The lame could walk. The dumb could talk. The blind could see. And in all this, they still were not sure of this man. The reason they weren't sure of him is because they didn't know all about his birth. It wasn't like it is today where you got cell phones and TV with news and all that. Nobody can go and take a picture of him and show his birth certificate. And when he was born, he was born in the town of Bethlehem. And he was of the lineage of David. They just didn't realize it. They thought because he came out of Galilee, that's where he was born. And a lot of people in those days, wherever they were born... That's where they stayed. They didn't move around a lot. They didn't have U-Haul trailers back then. They didn't have big trucks to haul their stuff away in. They didn't have pickup trucks. You know, they had small wagons and maybe a donkey if they were lucky. You know, they'd have to carry their stuff. They didn't move around a lot. They didn't have a Greyhound bus to pick them up. They didn't have aircraft to fly on. So, you know, they weren't sure where he was born. But they knew one thing. Never man spake like this man. You know, his word is so powerful. And he told him, he said, you're not going to be judged by me. My words are going to judge you. My word, it's a living word, it's going to judge you. And one day you're going to account. And he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, 
but not one jot nor tittle of my word, not the dotting of an I or the crossing of a T is going to pass away, but his words are going to stand. And he said, if any man will thirst, let him come to me and drink. Just come to me. You know, he said, whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. This has been a free gift all along. Everything else in life, you have to pay through the nose for sometimes. You go to Disney World. Disney World's supposed to be free entertainment, but you're going to have to work just about a 40-hour work week to afford to get in that 15 minutes entertainment. Amen. You know, you just pay a lot, and you don't get much for it. But with the Lord, His Word is so free for us to take. That's going to cost you something to keep it. If you're going to keep it in your heart, you're going to have to sell out to Him. You're going to have to love Him with everything that's within you. But when you taste of that Word and find out how good it is, it's worth it. What will a man give in exchange for a soul? Think about it. And this is our soul food. This is our soul drink. This is what meets our needs. These people come up. They had sent some uh, soldiers down to take Jesus while he was in the temple preaching because they wanted to try him and convict him of something. They wasn't sure what they were going to convict him of. They just wanted to get him out of the way somehow. He was in their way. They were afraid they were losing their position in the world. They was afraid the Romans had come take their place away, and they were men of authority. And they loved that power of authority. They loved that authority over people. But you know... When you come under the authority of God's Word, the authority of people has nothing to do with living right. Serving God means everything. Everything. Now, in the society we live in, Jesus told him, we have to obey the laws of society. But that's not the things he's talking about. He's talking about Obeying the laws of man that lead you away from God. You got to choose God and live for God. Instead of the lust of the world, we choose God. Yes. You know, Paul said it sort of like this The things that I would do, that's what I don't do. Mm -hmm. And the things that. I don't do, those are things I would. It's not sin that lives in me. Not me that wants to do them, but sin that lives in me. But then he said, Who will deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through my flesh I served the law of sin, which in Moses' day was known as the law of sin and death. But in my flesh, in my spirit, I serve God. In other words, when it comes down to going down the road and doing the speed limit, I do the speed limit. Because I break the speed limit and they stop me, I'm going to pay for the price of a ticket. I serve the law of sin and death. I don't kill and I don't murder because I'm going to be executed for it. That's the law of sin and death. But in my heart, I serve the living God. Amen. I serve Him. And that usually will take care of all the laws of sin and death. If you get careless in your mind and don't watch that speedometer, you know you could get a speeding ticket. But you know when you care about God, you're going to care about the things of this world doing their laws, but you're not going to be caught up in the lust of this world by having the fastest car in the parking lot, by making a car your God instead of God being your God. You know, I'm not preaching against everything. 
Cars are a good thing. I have a van. But you know, that's not my God. It's my, not my God. I don't worship that thing. Oh, friends, but I worship God. I do. I worship God. And Jesus cried and said, If any man thirst, all you've got to do is come and drink. And so many of them, even though they knew what He had done for them, still would not come and drink. And I wonder today, how many of us, instead of drinking the Word of God, instead of letting it go through and flow through our lives out into this world and share His world with the Word with this world, how many of us are just ignoring and go on and live our lives any kind of old haphazard way? You see, God's not haphazard. This world is haphazard. It wants this freedom. Yeah. Not freedom to live for God, freedom from hearing about God. They don't want to hear about His Word. But you know, we come together this morning because we love His Word. We want to hear something good out of the Word of God. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you'll drink in Jesus this morning, He can bless your soul if you'll just worship Him in spirit and in truth. Father, I thank you for this opportunity we've had together to share the Word of God. It means so much to us. No, oh Lord, I thank you for every trial I've been through, every trouble, every heartache, as long as I can know that I can still call on the name of Jesus. I'm going to be all right. No matter what happens, if death should claim me, I'm still going to be all right because I live eternal. No, oh Lord, help us today to take in the water of life freely and help us to let it cleanse our lives so that we'll be without spot or blemish or any such thing and we'll be ready for the coming of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I love our church services in here. It's so special to me. I was thinking this morning, what would I be doing if I hadn't uh, had to come in the nursing home? And what trouble could I have got into if God hadn't been directing my steps and I fell and broke my neck? I could have been in all kind of trouble. 